I think we're good. Yeah? That's good. I hope everybody is um, having some fun at home, finding time during the day in your creative space to get lost in your thoughts and make some stuff. And so we're going to show you a couple other things to make today. Are you ready, Georgia? Yep. Okay, so what we want to do is start with kids really young to train them to loosen their hand and loosen their grip on their pencil or their crayon, whatever it is that they're, they're working with. And to also not always work in short strokes like this. Like this is a sort of wrist stroke. I'm using my wrist, but instead to use their whole shoulder. So you're really using your shoulder to control the motion of the drawing and so that way you can draw small or you can draw large so what we're going to show you today is is are some exercises and essentially drawings that will teach you how to do that and also have fun in the process okay so we're gonna have Georgia stand up if you're at home if you have a big piece of paper like craft paper or maybe wrapping paper brown wrapping paper um, or if you don't have big paper, if you put two pieces of paper together and attach it to the wall, that'll work. We have this one on an easel, and Georgia's going to stand back from the easel, come back here a little bit, yep, and put one foot in front of the other. So like, you're standing like this, okay? Yes. Can you see her? Yeah, I All can right. see her. And so she's going to do the, the circle drawings that I talked about last time. She's going to make circles over and over and over again on her large piece of paper. But instead of using her wrist, yeah, you're going to use your shoulder. So keep your wrist really calm. And actually, can you stop one minute? So I think um, if you have parents at home or older siblings, you're gonna want to um, attach the paper really securely to the wall so that it doesn't move on your on your artist. Okay, hold on just a second, G. All right, and you can do smaller circles, not so big. And yeah, so try a couple circles. And actually, Georgia, I'm gonna have you use a pink a pink pencil. Thank you. So over and over, the same pink pencil. Very nice. Slow down just a little bit and back up from the easel just a little bit. There you go. Perfect job. So you want to back up from the easel and you want to hold your, your arm out just like she's doing. All right. Another pink one, please. Excellent. And a larger pink one. Very nice. Slow down just a little bit because you're trying to go over that circle over and over. This works really well with younger kids and also older kids. But even like two or three can do this. Very nice. Move your shoulder, not your wrist. There you go. And how about two more pink circles all over that paper. Excellent job. Very nice. Slow down. You want to try to go over the circle, over the circle. It's also super relaxing. Very nice. One more. And the key is when you start and stop, you want to try to end in the same place. Very good. All right, let's now try a purple one. So I want you to overlap those circles with purple. So make different circles, yep, and overlap those circles. Very nice job. So a couple artists that this reminds me of, you're going to do this all over your page, okay? Um, Sonia Delaney and Beatrice Mojazes, those are both painters that have circular patterns. Um, try to go over the same circle over and over. Good job. Very nice. Keep going. Go slow. Take your time. You really want to slow your eye and hand down to the same speed. Very nice, Georgia. Keep going. More so. I know it sort of hurts your shoulder, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's exercise. <laughs> exercise. All right. Keep going. 
fine. Very nice. I'm just going to keep handing Georgia more and more different colored pencils. And while she's doing this, maybe some of you out there, maybe some parents or other teachers have recognized this project. The first time I did something like this was when I had recently graduated from the University of Pennsylvania and I taught at the Philadelphia Community College. And uh, most of those teachers there were from Yale. And I realized did another one that I do in my class all the time with straight lines. And I realized that these exercises, okay, keep going over here. Make sure you get all over your page. She's a little tired. She's a little tired. Can you not see? Not really. Can you see now? Yeah. Here, here I'll move these out of the way. There we go. Look at that. Look at the whole thing. But what I was saying was some of these exercises can be traced back to um, Joseph Albers when he was teaching at Yale and also slow down just a little bit because you want you want your circles let me show you one more you want your circle to go over and over the same line as hard as you can very nice so yeah so these exercises trace back to Joseph Albers and then also to the Bauhaus in Germany I think your poor right hand is over here. It needs some more circles. It's feeling left out. What is the Bauhaus? The Bauhaus? The Bauhaus was a, uh, an art school in Germany, um, and many famous artists were at the Bauhaus. So, um, or many famous artists had, had teachers that were at the Bauhaus. So a lot of... Um, a lot of the um, exercises in art schools and in art education that students may learn about, like drawing while you're listening to music or um, training your eye and hand to move at the same speed, they start, they originate from uh, Germany and from the Bauhaus. Mm, very cool. Well, yes, Sander, it is cool. Georgia, that's looking wonderful. I love the, the pink, the green little zip zap there. So really, literally, this could go on for hours. George is, George is doing an excellent job. Very nice. How about one more green? Are you zooming in on her circular? I am. She's really using her shoulder very well there. So now, um, kids and parents out there who are interested, um, what you could do is you could take something like a crayon, these studio crayons, and you could add another layer to this drawing. So Georgia, you could take a crayon like this, and you could find shapes that overlap that you want to color in. And so that's a way of extending the drawing and kind of working more on, um, oh yes, that's so nice. Look at that yellow ochre in there. Um, it's just a way of extending the drawing and, and, and making more design decisions as you go along. I know, right? It's hard to choose. And this is just one of those kits you can buy from an art store or um, I think we picked this one up at a yard sale. Oh, it was a it was a cake hand me down. One of our good family friends hand me down, handed me down this, handed handed this down. <laughs> That's really awesome. Very good job. Concentrating. Maybe back up just a little bit, Georgia, so they can see you. Yes, there we go. Can you see okay, Manner? Yes. Now, some variations. 
limitations on this, if you have, you know, a wall outside and you have sidewalk chalk, you could do this outside on a fence or on the ground um, so that you can like, you know, make a space rather than just a piece of paper. Um, you could also attach one of these crayons. Oh, that's so lovely. How about an orange one? Could attach one of these crayons to a longer stick so that it, it feels a little bit more like a brush like you could attach it with some tape let's see if Georgia can try that out hold on might be kind of hard we'll see it helps you train your hand to really back up from that tool. I'm liking this. Pretty this powerful, cool. right? Yeah. Yeah. So let me write out those names so you can check them out on your own time. So Sonia, grab one more, Georgia. Or maybe a little, little more down there at the bottom. Those are two uh, painters that, um, if you looked at their work online, it would look similar in terms of um, perception. It would look similar to what you're seeing here, even though they're paintings, not drawings. But you'll see what I mean if you look them up. Sonia Delaunay and Beatrice Mahazes. So we have to go back to the drawing board, Georgia. We have to go back to the drawing board, so to speak. 
and use our skills that we just learned about with the circle, but this time we're gonna make a really large circle and she's gonna take her time making that circle. And then that circle is gonna become something. All right, so make your circle. <laughs> but step back, step back, and draw very slowly. Gently, gently. You're gonna go over it several times, so you can go a little faster than that. Good job. Excellent, look at the circle. Now, if you don't get the circle so circular on the first time, you always have your eraser, and your eraser is a really good thing to have. She's doing a pretty good job, but she might want to clean up. Oh, that's good, okay, stop, all right. Turn around, look at the camera. Excellent job. <laughs> so now, Georgia, yes. as the artist, yes. you have an opportunity here. I do. You have a large circle on your paper, and that circle could be anything from a pond, okay. a dinner plate, okay, the earth. That's the one. Yeah. So what do you want to make it? An earth. An earth. Okay. So now, you got to think, kids, if you're making it an earth, you want to think of everything that's round on the earth. That's a lot of things. Well, think of a couple things. And you're going to make round things in the earth. If you're doing a dinner plate, you can put whatever you want on your dinner plate. You can put an Oreo cookie, or a grape, or an olive, or uh, a burger, a, a plant-based burger, or a veggie burger. Xander's talking to me, maybe an eyeball is what he's saying. Nope, that's not what he's saying, okay? <laughs> but you can put anything round on your plate and make a very large dinner plate. Or you could make a pond and you could make anything round in the pond, like a lily pad. How's it going, Georgia? Pretty good. good. I'm really bad at this. Ooh, what are you making? Yeah, I think that's fun. Okay, a oh, soccer ball. A soccer ball. A soccer ball. That's pretty cool. Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> Sandra told me to look at the camera. When I'm talking, <laughs> to look at the camera. I have you could put it. a roll of tape on your circle. <clears throat> I'm just saying. Okay, soccer people, please excuse my soccer ball. It's really bad. Soccer balls are on the earth, so that's a great thing to put. But it looks really bad. Hmm. Yeah, I did that really bad. Please excuse my soccer ball. <laughs> it's sort of a geo soccer ball. Yeah, okay. Um. What else is round, Georgia? Spaghetti, sorry, no, okay. An it's eyeball? Like yeah, sure. There are eyeballs on the earth. There are eyeballs on the Mm. They're sort of roundish. Well, the actual eyeball is round. I'm yeah, just drawing true. the whole eyelid. You're drawing the socket. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Mm hmm Yeah. What else is round on the earth, Sander? Peas. Peas. Oranges. Oranges. Peas. Mm. Wheels. Wheels are round. Wheels are round a lot Georgia this they are now remember your goal is to have to back up and do round objects this looks fabulous it's really and you could invite people with you to draw on it together if your paper you is please? big enough oh sure thank you your paper is six feet yeah but right now you have to have some social distancing so we can't be that close If you did it on the sidewalk, you could do it. A cookie is round. A cookie is round. Just, a cookie is round. He's telling me to look at the camera again. <laughs> mm. Can we see what George is doing? We can. 
can zoom That's in. Very oh, that looks really good. Wow. Okay. Um, so this is just the start of your drawing, right? Yes. A pie. What else? A pie. Can you or make a, that a little bit round? I'll go over a few more times. But that's really round. Oh. oh okay. It's round! It How is, is really that round? round? Better? That's better. Okay. So sometimes we call these pond drawings, and sometimes we call them earth drawings, and sometimes we call them space drawings. Sometimes we call them dinner plate drawings. If you're older, like 9, 10, 11, 12, or even older, and you want to try to draw exactly what you see on a dinner plate, you can put the plate in front of you and then try to do a drawing from that, but enlarge it. And this is one of the uh, many lesson plans that I have on the yellow line um, site that are um, part of what I've uh, worked on in the last nine years. So you can check out more lesson plans at the yellow line. You know, I just realized you're saying things that are round, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Grapes? many things are round, oh. but they might not always be circular. What do you mean? Because like, like grapes are kind of ovalish, you know? But they're still round. That's true. You're right. And spaghetti is long, but it's still round. Oh, it can it can be tubular. Yeah. Mm, tubular. How would you draw a tube? Here, I can show you. You keep drawing yours. But if you wanted to draw a tube, let's say a tube of spaghetti or a penne pasta. Penne. Penne pasta. Maybe you would do something like that. Does that look like a penne pasta, Xander? It looks pretty yummy. Does it? Very I'm getting kind of hungry. Yeah, me too. Um, or spaghetti. You said a wheel. A wheel. I'm just going to Let's see your wheel. Ooh, nice. So let's let Georgia finish this wheel and then I think we'll finish this off camera and we'll have it here in the background when we do lesson number seven, okay? So you can see what the end result is and you can do your own version of it. Does that sound good? Hey Georgia, you wanna turn around and say goodbye to them? Yeah, that's really bad. That's pretty good. You're gonna work more on yes. it, right? Yeah. Bye, guys. We'll see you next time.